Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we are going to paint a fall bouquet. This video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. You all have all the supplies that I used linked down below and a coupon code as well so you can save some money. I'm actually going to start really loosely sketching in some basic shapes. I've got a big tulip up here. It's kind of like going to be a rusty red color. I'm going to do and another one up here. I'm going to do my sketch with a color ice pencil in orange. That way I'm gonna have that fall color going already and um, I don't think it'll stand out too much from you know the color other colors I paint on top and we'll have another tulip down here I don't like to bother with erasing lines but I like my lines to actually stay so I like to use the regular color pencil as opposed to a watercolor pencil just because I know I'm gonna be able to keep my lines pretty well now there's a couple of kind of like really um, I would say kind of lacy floaty multi-head flowers in here and I'm just going to put some kind of scribbles in there to indicate those and we've got another little bunch of those right over here you know don't don't get too fussy this is going to be kind of an abstract bouquet and it looks like we've got another one they almost look like sweet peas but um not quite I think they, they, they look a little bit like that just like the shape of them and whatnot and now I'm going to switch to a pink and there's a couple of roses. I'm going to get one down here. Maybe it's a Camilla. I'm just going to get a circle for that. I'm going to get another one back here behind it. Get one up here. And there's another one over there, but I think I want to put one over here actually. And we've also got, and I am kind of like rearranging things a little bit. We've got another uh, batch of flowers. These really look like sweet peas kind of coming up here. So I'm just going to get the little kind of bonnet shape of the of the petals and put a, a couple there. If you don't want to sketch first, you don't have to. You can totally just, just kind of freehand it as we go. Um, and there's also, there's these little kind of like, it almost looks like... Um, like a bell type flower. I like that. There's three of those right off of one stem. I think that's kind of pretty. And any greenery I'm just going to I'm just going to loosely put in. Now there is a vase. I'm not that crazy about the shape of the vase that's in the reference photo I'm going by. So I think I'm just going to I think I'm just going to make up my own. I've got this uh, I meant to grab a uh, purple pencil. In fact, I'm going to go grab that purple one that I, is that the one? This is the one I just used. Um, I grabbed an indigo one by mistake. I thought it was purple. And I'm just going to do kind of like a wider at the bottom. Um, just kind of straightish vase. I'm going to flip it around. Give it a look. Now you can use whatever watercolor paper you like. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy for this loose technique. And I am going to start with a large brush. I'm using my Mimic brushes from jerrysartorama.com. I'm going to start off with this big one. And I've taped my paper down on all four sides. And I'm just going to like run my finger across it to make sure that there's no uh, lifting of the tape. Because I don't want to have, um, I want to have a nice border. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of flick on some water to begin with. And then I am going to, I think I'll go with the vase first. I think I want kind of like a purple for my vase. So I'm just going to wet that vase as well. I'm going to switch to, um, I'm going to switch to a three quarter inch flat. This is a synthetic Taclon brush. The other is a synthetic like faux squirrel brush. And I am going to grab my paints here. I'm going to make myself a purple. Now you could use a premixed purple. I think I want something that's going to be a little bit more granular. So I'm going to take ultramarine blue because that granulates really nicely. I'm going to take some um, some kind of like a reddish violet color here. And I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. A little bit more blue. All right, and I'm going to throw this in my vase color. I want to keep it pretty light and loose. Using a bigger brush than you typically would can help you keep a looseness to your to your picture. I'm 
going to grab some of that color in the corners as well just to kind of help frame and keep it nice and loose. And I can spatter some of that in there too, even mix up a little bit more. I think that might be Bordeaux, that might be the name of that color. I've got, I wrote on the side of my pans, but I've got so many pans in there I can't really see what they all are. Tone that down a little bit. So I've got this gray purple. Okay, and then a little more burnt sienna in there, gray it down a little bit more. A little more burnt sienna, a little more blue. Give myself a little shadow. Uh, and I'm going to put some shadow on this side of the vase. The vase is opaque, so we're not going to see stems through it. Lighting source is soft, but on this side. So our shadow would come over to this side a little bit more. Under those flowers. And... I think I'll also just kind of help things blend a little bit with a little spray of water. You can do that elsewhere as well. Okay, I find that round brushes do spatter a little bit better, so I would like to add a little bit more. And that's going to help give it that fall feeling that I want. Unless I really want a fall feeling, to tell you the truth, I'm a summer girl, but um, hey, fall's coming. What are you going to do? you got to embrace it. Otherwise, you're going to be sad that summer's over. I'm going to grab some of this nice, sunny, bright yellow. I'd say it's probably permanent yellow. I'm going to go up to this tulip up here, and I'm just going to start throwing in some painterly strokes like that. Then I'm going to grab some, some of this rose color here. Gonna add some strokes to that. Let it blend. I know this isn't this isn't as warm as you'd think of like a fall color, but I I don't want to have bright orange. I know I'm gonna do some or, more orange colors elsewhere, so I just wanted that to be a little bit more a little bit fresher looking. And this is a parrot tulip, so I'm gonna go with a smaller brush, and I'm gonna grab. Some of the yellow. Maybe now we'll grab a little bit of the like a grab like a cadmium red or a vermilion, something like that. You want it real pasty on your brush. See how it's kind of streaky on my palette because it's really really dry. And I'm just gonna go in and throw in some of the indications of a parrot tulip. And I can go in with that rose, and I can throw in some redder indications from the center. All right, I'm going to grab some olive green and drag out a stem. And I'm not going to worry if it gets into other um, other like uh, colors or water or anything, I'll, I'll let it flow if that happens. I think that's kind of nice when that happens. In fact, I'll throw in some other stems while I'm at it for these other two lips. And for the other ones, I think I'll do this about the same thing. I just want to keep it pretty, uh, pretty loose. I think that was getting a little too fussy. And so this is something I want to be kind of more of a loose technique. So maybe I'll just stick with this um, this bigger brush. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. I think having one a little bit detailed is good because then it, you you can uh, people can kind of fill in the blanks. But I like to keep it a little bit more uh, free flowing. Grab some more of that rose. I love cool reds, so I want to get, even though it's kind of a fall arrangement, I want to get some of that color in there too. I'm getting too mixy, so try to avoid getting too much mixing. Um, now I'm just going to pick up that color and flick some of that in the background as well. Okay, we've got those. Um, 
We've got some of the roses. I think I'm going to wait on those because that's still really wet. I don't want that to bleed too badly. Um, for the kind of sweet pea looking flowers, I'm going to take the rose and a little bit of that orangey color and a little bit of that violet -y color to kind of tone it down a little bit. I think that'll work pretty well. And I'm just going to go in and just make dabs. I think I'm just going to make this um, that same color. I like that. I don't think I want more orange in here, so any of those like little ruffly flowers, I think I'm going to go ahead and just make, make with this mix, which is the rose, the orange, and that purpley red that we used. This is more of an abstraction, so I'm kind of thinking, okay, what do I need here? What do I need there? What will look good here? This is fun. If you're having a day where you're feeling a little stressed out, you know, slap some paint around, have fun with it. A lot of times I'll use paper that's not very expensive because it's like, you know, I don't want to worry that I am ruining paper. So I will get cheaper paper and I'll have fun. This is just some, you know, uh, wood pulp paper. It's nothing like crazy expensive or anything. I get my little bells in there. some olive green, get a little ultramarine blue, make this kind of yucky brown with what was on my brush already, but that'll be perfect for the stem here. Ooh, one of my cats came down. <clears throat> it's kind of a rainy day, rain, you know, the cold days, you know, it can't tell if it wants to rain or it wants to be sunny, and if it would just be a little sunny, it'd actually be kind of warm, but instead it's just kind of like, kind of like yucky and cold. Yeah, I know Frida, it's yucky and cold. I think she might be a little jealous because um, cause, uh, Tally made a cameo on one of the videos I was filming the other day, and I think she feels jealous. Probably she just wants me to do her bidding. I feel like I want some other little flowers in here. I'm not sure what color I want, though. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I'll do that peach. Remember I said I wasn't going to do the peach, but you know what? Maybe I'll do the peach now. Let's take that yellow I was using, a little bit of that rose. Get nice and light. Maybe a little bit more of that pink in there. Lighten it up a little bit. I'm using a divided water bucket, so I've got the dirty side and the clean side there. Um, and I'm not being descript because I'm just kind of making up shapes as I go. Part of the fun here. Um, oh, the other one I would put right up here. I want some blue in the background. I'm going to go ahead and uh, spatter some of that ultramarine blue I was using in there. Maybe even brush a little bit in from the side. Just having fun. Hope you're having fun. Hope you're painting along. If it's too much spatter, just kind of Wipe the brush. I almost feel like I'd like a little yellow up there too. Grab some of that same yellow. I could use yellow ochre, but I've been using this one, so I think I'm just gonna stick with what I've been using. Plus, it's gonna get into some of that purple anyway, and that will kind of make it neutralize like a yellow ochre would. Alright, now let's go on to the roses. I'm gonna take the that rose color, but I'm gonna water it way down. Maybe even add a little bit of that purpley rose in there. Water it way down. I'm going to start. I'm actually starting at the outside. I'm trying to leave just a little sliver of white so it doesn't bleed right into the background. And I'm painting those outer, the kind of peripher, peripher, perif, peripheral, peripheral of the flower. Just getting a very basic shape in there. I wanted one up here. We're gonna put one up there. I don't know if I really drew one up there, but we're, gonna have, we're having one up there now because I feel like it just needs it. And I don't, I did have one drawn there, but I don't think it needs it there. I think I'll actually put like a fern there or something. Okay, now I'm gonna switch brushes and grab one that's not as absorbent. Just uh, like a Taclon brush. I'm gonna grab that purple, kind of pasty, grab the red, the rose red, kind of pasty. And I'm gonna go right in the center
And when you put that pasty paint over the wet paint, if it's if it's dry enough, if your paint is dry enough, you'll be able to retain enough of those lines to give you the definition that you want. Now this one I have the center up here, so I'm just going to put a little dot up there. More of a shadow on this side. I don't want a ton of detail. If I did these flowers really hard and detailed, they would be so out of place next to the other ones. And we're going to do this one here, the center right there. Well, this, this flower in front of that one. Connect some of the shapes if it looks a little too fussy. Okay. Now for some ferns. I'm going to stick with this brush so I can mix up my paint a little bit thicker. And that way if something's not quite dry, eh, I don't have to worry about it too much. I'll take the, the olive green on its own. And I'm just going to throw in one over here. Just doing little comma strokes. Bigger as they get closer to the, uh, to the vase so they're skinnier at the tip. Come out a little bit more. Let's see. Let's do another one. Hmm. Where should we put it? What do you think, guys? Well, we'll stick it over here. I know we had a flower there at one point, but that flower, that poor flower, just kind of faded into the ether. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put one over here too. Now, if you've ever toll painted, you know what a comp stroke is. I think you can use it in watercolor too. There's no law, there's no painting police that are going to knock down your door and say, wait a minute, are you just painting a flower with watercolor using tall painting techniques? That's not going to happen. All right, we need another one. Where should we put it? Let's put it over there. I think that'll work. Sure, why not? I want those petals rounded, so I'm going to have the round part of the brush going out and dragging the strokes in. Bring that in there as well. We can overlap because it's nice and strong color. Okay. Now we've got a lot of the paper filled, but what we don't have is a lot of contrast. We don't have a lot of um, we don't have a lot of detail. We do want a little bit of um, we do want a little bit of definition here and there, so I'm going to start with some shadows. I'm doing my ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. I'm going to make a nice gray. Not a ton of water in here, because I'm. this is still very wet. Um, I'm going to just give this edge a little bit of definition here. I can bring a little bit of that in. I can let a little bit of it spill out. I can take a softer brush and I can and I can dry it because it's these are really absorbent. Ah, dry that off a little bit, and I can just kind of bring it out a little bit if I want to. Kind of disturbing the wash underneath. I'm not happy about that, but. I'll think about it. You know, I might I might uh, go in after it's dry and do something to it, or I might actually I could rewet the whole thing and just let it let it blend together a little bit more. Now this since this is a cheaper paper, um, a cotton paper, I can't do as much working on this as I would as I could if it was a cotton paper. So I do need to keep mindful of that. But I chose that because. I didn't want to fuss with it. Let me make some more of that purpley color though. I really like that. That's nice. All right, I think I'll leave that be. Okay, so for any other little details I want to do, I want to do it with this brush because it doesn't carry a lot of water. It's a just a number eight synthetic round. You could use the Bestie brand would work good. Um, uh, Aqualon, uh, Polar Flow, I think would be good. The uh, Ebony Splendor would also be good. 
trying not to over where I like kind of like what's happening there I don't really want to do much to that one that's probably the hardest thing is to get that restraint knowing how much detail you can add before it becomes overworked If your paint gets muddy, just rinse your brush and reload it. You don't want to have uh, you don't want to have the mud. A lot of times you just need a little line here or there to balance things out. That mess I made. Ah, uh, let's see, got a little bit of that. And we'll get a little bit more of that color up here, too. We're just suggesting these flowers. A lot of times, fall flowers. Like, you know, I think about mums, um, sunflowers, things like that as being fall flowers. And those tend to be very stiff, kind of heavy flowers, probably because they're more hardy and they can handle the temperatures. So doing, it, uh, a, um, doing a treatment like this, I think techniques like this can just give you a little bit of a fresher, livelier feeling. And you can still use those colors in... Uh, and get some of that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that the feeling without having it be too too stiff. All right, I want to put a few a few leaves in there. I'm gonna take some ultramarine and mix it with that green. Maybe we can add a little bit of that purple and tone it down a little bit. That's gonna give me a nice brown color, and I can go in and throw in some. Just some little kind of like grasses. And I don't have a lot of leaves in here, but I would like something a little bit more leafy. A little more leafy looking. So I think I'll choose the olive on its own. And if I said sap green, it's all been olive um, in the Turner line. The sap green's really vibrant, and I thought it was just too springy. Uh, so I'm using olive, but if you're using another another brand, the sap green maybe just exactly what you need. Sometimes I'll switch brush shape so that I don't end up with the same uh, the same shape leaf every time. There's a little tip for you. If you feel like you're just uh, getting the same thing each time, you might just need to switch your brush up. All right, I'm gonna let this dry, and then we will finish it off and take off the tape and see how it looks. I'm gonna be honest with you, I really don't wanna do a lot to this painting. Um, I'm liking the way it looks, and even though it's really loose, that's what I really like about it. So I'm taking a liner brush so I don't get too carried away with anything, because I don't wanna lose the freshness, and I'm taking that purpley color, a little bit of the rose, mostly the purpley though, that purpley red, and I am just gonna throw in some little details on this flower here. I'm going to put a few because these have really tiny petals closely packed together and I like that and I want to get that essence. And just a few there. Maybe just a few Kind of crazy grasses. I don't know if I should even bother sharing the reference photo. It like it looks nothing like it. 
it was kind of but sometimes you just you just need something to go from you just need a starting point you need like like a creative prompt <clears throat> excuse me goodness gracious i haven't been talking today very much so i'm froggy um so like you know you just need that like creative prompt to get you going and then other than that you're really not using the reference photo i really like that even though it's very nondescript but see that's what i like about having those colored pencil lines there because that gives me just enough just enough of structure but i love how the colors are bleeding in i don't want to lose that i don't want to ruin that uh i do feel like i want a little bit more a little more something there Maybe I'll just drop some color, take some pink, and take some of that red. Red's a tough color to work with because it's hard to photograph, and I don't think we our eyes can see the values of it. Um, I don't think we can see the full value range of red very well compared to like other colors. So it's kind of tricky. Get some yellow. Yeah, I like that. Just that sometimes you don't really know what it needs until you just kind of go in there and you throw some color and it's like, okay, that's better. It's kind of like cooking, you know, it's like, hmm, let me add a little of this. I'm not sure if I like that. You know, and you just keep adding until like, yep, that's, that tastes good. Well, we're going to leave it there. Hope I'm not spattering the camera. I really like that purple color. I'd go to the town office in a few minutes. I'm going to cover with paint. <laughs> All right. Do I want to do anything else with a shadow? Maybe a little bit. Um, I'm going to... I like painting with this brush, but unless it's like really wet, it's hard to... Uh, to get a point. And if you don't have it really... If it's... um. If you want dark color, it's not the best because you have to have it so wet and you end up getting a lot of water in your paint. I just feel like I want a little... little indication of that shadow. Might be a little much. We'll blot some of it off. How's that? That's fine. Okay, we're gonna do one. Oh, you know what? You know what I think I'll do actually. What would be kind of neat? Let's try this. Let's try a red pencil because I want a little definition. I know it's not really gonna leave much lead, but it might leave a little hint, and it will give me that like that little smidgen of definition I want. Oh, you know what? Gosh, this color is actually dissolving in the wet water a little bit. Um, it'll give me just that little smidgen of definition that I want there. And I want a little bit more stem. I'll leave that one alone. I really like that one. Okay, now let's give it a quick blast with the heat tool and we'll take our tape off. All right, this is dry. Let's remove the tape and see what we have. Now, this is a very loose, very easy practice piece. If you're feeling a little, um, uh, just like you just want to loosen up, you feel a little stressed out, give this a try. I think it's cheerful and it's fun, and um, I think it's kind of innocent, nice looking. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Check out the video description for links to everything that I used. I'm going to uh, take these pans out of the thing so I can see what colors I used. The colors that I did use I know are in the 24 set of the 15 milliliter tubes of Turner watercolors from jerrysartorama.com. So if you have that set, you have those all those colors. Um, but if not, it is a lot of paint. It's a great value if you're looking to, uh, to get a little bit more substantial set of the Turner watercolors. Or you can go buy the tubes individually. They're pretty good price uh, on a pretty good price 
at Jerry's. If you like loose flower painting, um, not quite this loose, but pretty loose, I have a watercolor flower workshop. I'll link that down below too if you want to check that out. And um, it's one of my, I think it's my second most popular class next to the essential tools and techniques for watercolor. It's a lot of fun. There's tons of flowers that you can learn to paint using basic stroke work techniques. And um, you can incorporate them into bouquets and swags and uh, wreaths and things like that. So it shows you how to paint a bunch of basic flowers. It shows you how to arrange them and put them together in your own imaginative bouquets. And it's just a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's good to have those kind of skills where you don't know what to paint. You can just sit down with your paints, your sketchbook, your brushes and just go to town making some flowers. So uh, I enjoyed this. I hope you did too. And we'll see you next time. Bye.